Welcome back ceramic students to day two. Uh, why don't we get into our art kits today and see what tools we have, uh, see what tools you might have to find around the house, and see what tools you might have to make. All right, so each one of you guys got outfitted with an extra awesome art kit. Pop that thing open, find just about any single tool you could possibly need for any art project ever. Ha, huh. yeah, right, this is my tools. Um, I, I, you know, put this toolbox together probably over the course of 15 or 20 years of um, to either teaching or making art objects. Um, it, I don't want you guys to get too caught up in, in how simplistic your kits are. Um, my kit is full of all kinds of strange things that I've either made or I've found or I've purchased, but they're all basically, um, they're, an art kit is built uh, based on projects, right? And so I don't you know, amass a whole collection of tools and then decide what to make. I do it the other way around. So let's take a look at your kits. Now they are a bit more simplistic because we have uh, just a couple of, you know, simple projects left to go. Um, but, you know, even with a couple simple tools, we can make some really great stuff. So first off, uh, five pounds of clay or so, and I've got that wrapped in four millimeter plastic. That. Uh, is totally up to you to make sure that this stays covered and hydrated. I am not delivering any more clay to you guys over the course of uh, what will likely be the rest of the school year, so make sure that uh, this clay uh, lasts. Uh, you've got an extra sheet of 4 mil plastic in there. Say uh, we're in the middle of a project and you don't need this extra sheet, probably not a bad idea to just wrap up that clay in two layers of plastic just to make sure that it does not dry out. Uh, you've got a small sponge. Uh, feel free to either cut this up or modify it, whatever shape, uh, whatever style you like. Um, a couple of binder clips. I'll show you what we're going to use these for later on. Uh, it's kind of handy to clip plastic together. Um, scrap of 120 grit sandpaper. And a couple of um, scraps of wood under closer inspection, right? Uh, this is the kind of thing that you might stir your coffee with in the morning, and these are some popsicle sticks. Now, um, this doesn't seem like all that much. Oh, I forgot. You forget. Handy dandy uh, plastic container, not unlike the containers that we used to uh, cover up your artworks in the studio, and a canvas board in which to work on. Um, pretty straightforward stuff, but I want to. Uh, maybe demonstrate uh, at least up front, um, you know what uh, uh, what some of these can be used for. Before I talk about you know these things, uh, let's talk about some tools that you may have around the house. You know because um, we had limited time, kind of scraping these things together. I didn't get all of you guys every one of these, but uh, keep in mind that it can be handy just to have uh, an old towel sitting around for doing wipe ups. Um, it can't, it's going to be incredibly handy for you to find a couple of used food containers. Um, we're going to have uh, uh, the need to use some water. So remember, you know, fairly regularly throughout the uh, semester, we'd have, um, you know, some water for a sponge. Uh, and don't forget also, if we ever need slip, uh, you'll need a container to cover it with. Uh, something like a yogurt container or something with a lid is very, very handy. There's no way that you're going to need that much slip for the rest of the semester, but this is just the one I happen to have. Uh, so I'll be using something like that. Now, um, if you happen to have uh, any small paintbrushes around, uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys got in the habit of using paintbrushes in the studio, but uh, a small paintbrush can be very, very handy too. That is not in your kit. Um, uh, I did not include something like a wire tool. This is one that I've made, and this is more like one that you would have in our studios. Um, we'll actually talk today about how we can improvise something like that. And I find uh, that this tool, the Fettling knife, to be one of the most important tools. I use this thing so much whenever I'm working in clay. Um, and when I didn't have a Fettling knife that looked like one of these, I just had uh, an old kitchen knife that I dulled the blade on. You don't want to use something super sharp. Uh, otherwise, you'll end up cutting yourself, or you'll slice up your canvas board. Uh, but, you know, something like that can be really handy. We will uh, be improvising something like this, too, out of wood today. Uh, but let's start with our clay, because um, I want you guys to actually uh, begin by um, preparing some slip. 
and the slip is going to be a bit of a two-part process and we'll need to do it overnight. Uh, the first thing we need to be able to do is get out our clay, get out our clay and um, I suppose you could, you know, just like a gorilla or something, just try to grab off the top of our clay, but um, wire tools are just so much more um, sophisticated and satisfying uh, to, to work with. So uh, here's a, a fairly straightforward way to improvise a wire tool. Uh, some string of any kind. Uh, monofilament fishing line works just fine. Uh, this is sort of like a heavy gauge uh, weaver's string. Uh, found that guy at Goodwill for, you know, a fraction of what it costs to buy that kind of thing at a hardware store. Uh, and I'm going to just, um, I could tie some loops in the end and just kind of use it to pull my fingers through. Uh, but I've got kind of big hands, so I'm just going to grab some uh, spare bits and pieces I had sitting around my studio. I'm sure I took something apart that... Um, you know, these were essential and put it all back together and oops, I'll find out later, I suppose. Um, but if I tie two of these nylon washers, one on either end of my wire tool, don't need quite a long, quite so long a tail, so snip that guy off. tie up the other one. That will work just as well as any of the wire tools we had in our studio. And on top of that, you made it, which really feels good. I like making my own tools. Who knows, maybe that'll just become my new favorite um, wire cutting tool. So uh, to make some slip, uh, we need to liquefy some clay. The easiest way to do that is um, not to get like a blender or anything, but to just let some clay dry out and then add a little bit of water to it. And so since we will likely be using a little bit of slip uh, this semester, go ahead and unwrap a little bit of your clay. While you're at it, use your brand new wire tool to slice off a little chunk. And, uh, and what you'll do is just kind of flatten out some some chunks and let these guys dry out overnight. Uh, I suppose you could just let this whole block dry out overnight, but um, if they're a little bit flatter pieces, they tend to smash up a little bit easier uh, tomorrow when they're greenware. If you try to smash up a big thick piece of clay, it's a bit tricky. And also, the smaller and thinner they are, the faster they will dry out. Now, as long as most of you guys are hanging out in the Milwaukee area, uh, these should be probably bone dry and ready to liquefy and to slip in a matter of hours. But if any of you happen to uh, vacation to warmer, more humid climates, uh, clay can take a very long time to dry out. Um, in uh, 60 or 70 percent humidity, like um, you know what we get here in the summertime, uh, you can almost leave clay outside and it won't dry out. Uh, so we will come back to those tomorrow. I'm going to wrap this clay back up. Make sure that that wrapping is really tight, so that I don't um, uh, I don't end up drying out my whole block of clay. Now the other tool that I want to improvise is that uh, fettling knife, and for that we're going to use some of our popsicle sticks. So popsicle stick is almost already thin enough to do some uh, work in the clay, and actually, to be honest, that small radius that's right at the end of the popsicle stick can be really nice. Um, but some versions of tools that I've made using things similar to popsicle sticks are these. These uh, are actually fipple sticks, uh, which we'll be making uh, later on this semester for our um, stone flutes, our ocarinas. Uh, so if you take a sort of a careful look at these guys, I've tapered this one uh, the long way, and I've tapered it the skinny way. And so it gets a little bit tricky here. My camera's not wanting to focus on that tiny little edge. Uh, but it gets thinner and thinner and thinner toward the edge. Uh, essentially, you know, those of you guys who know your tools, these are chisel tip tools. So how do I go from uh, something that's a uniform thickness to a chisel tip? Well, if uh, I blow this thing up, right, and this is uh, an enlarged version of our popsicle stick side view, uh, a chisel tip is essentially going to remove some excess material from the edges. So we basically need to 
cut away, or in this case, we'll sand away uh, some of that extra tip so that we have our chisel tip left on the end. That is what we will use our sandpaper for. And so the process of actually getting something that's uh, sanded down to a chisel tip, something like this, would be to hold uh, your popsicle stick at a bit of an angle and just work it over the sandpaper. Now the angle, you hold it against the paper. I recommend sanding on a flat surface, that way your chisel is nice and, uh, nice and even. The angle at which you hold your uh, stick is going to affect the angle of your chisel. The steeper your angle, the more blunt your chisel will be. The more shallow your angle, uh, the longer your chisel will be. I'll show this um, chisel one more time here, see if I can't get it to focus. This chisel has a fairly shallow angle. You can um, uh, see about how low of an angle I would have had to use to arrive at that angle. So I'll just kind of carefully, without sanding my fingertips off, put pressure on the tip of my tool and work that over the sandpaper. Now the sandpaper that we're using is 120 grit sandpaper, so you should start to see sawdust almost immediately, and you can see that I'm already starting to do some damage to the tip of that. Um, these popsicle sticks are made out of a pretty soft wood, and so you should be able to make pretty quick work of that. Um, now the first tool shape that I would like you to go for is something that you could easily cut the clay with. And so uh, something like a chisel tip or a fettling knife uh, are the two sort of shapes that I think that uh, you should aim at. Uh, you could do a two-headed tool. Uh, you could cut on this end or cut on this end. Now let's just say, for example, maybe you have access to more uh, wood laying around the house. Um, this is um, just a piece of old dried up 2x4 that I uh, have riven or split. And um, if you, say, maybe had access to some carving tools or some power sanding tools, uh, you could fairly quickly and easily start to make your own tools as well. Um, so, of course, I've got access to a bunch of this stuff because I've been dinking around with it forever, um, but you may not. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm only going to limit myself to the tools that I have in your kit. So as long as uh, uh, you're having fun, you might as well go ahead and carve away and make all of your own tools. I am going to stick with only the tools that, uh, that I provided you guys. So uh, go for it. Get in there. Uh, prepare your uh, wet clay dried chips for slip. Uh, start making your uh, cutting tools and I'll come back tomorrow and, and uh, show you where I'm at.